Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How are you, Inspector? I'm well. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Good to see you again. Uh, likewise. I've After all this time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was trying to join. I tried to look for a link. I uh, actually don't. Uh, I reset my computer. So the way I join is I don't log into Zoom on my computer. I just have uh, an act like on like join meeting. It'll show me all my previous meetings. And I had yeah. saved as instructor. And then uh, I was trying to find anything in my email. So. Yeah, it, it's whatever. Um, whenever I send it, the link out week to week, it's the yeah. same link. It's the same link. I will. I will book more. Yeah. So if you, yeah, That's yeah, do. that way you know we'll, we'll we'll be changing all of that in a minute. But in the yeah. meantime, I'll still be having these these private kind of meetings on uh, Zoom, and yeah. it'll be that same link. Yeah. All right. So where do we start, man? We don't want to waste any time. I don't know. Well, where do we start? So that's a. Uh, uh... So I can start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's uh, it's always a pleasure, you know, and an opportunity and a privilege to actually have this one to one. Um, you can give me an update. So I can see where we go from there, and I don't know where you are, you know, what yeah, sort of. Well, you said you, you've gone through yet. Yeah, you sent me a couple of uh, academic concerns, so we'll make sure that we. You want to do that? Get to okay. that also, the calendar and. Uh, some oh, yeah, other things yeah. kind yeah. of uh, bordering on the esoteric, I guess, you know, my favorite yeah. topic. <laughs> that, 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 that one I was thinking about today as well. I just, it's, it's funny how Thanksgiving is on the same day of the year, every year. Yeah. Thursday, Friday. So yeah. obviously that's, that, that, that doesn't go by un unintentionally. And so a mm -hmm. lot of thought, the steamers gave it a lot of thought. Um, I found this, uh, I forget his name, Ryan Mahone, Mahogany, Ryan Mahone, Mahone, on YouTube. I uh, did, a, did a nice 30-minute uh, clip explaining the calendar system, giving okay. the history and yeah. whatnot. But it just, you know, when we, when we look back through, through history and then look in the new science to date back, and then it, it's just it's questionable. This question. Um, maybe this knowledge is being revisited because there's going to be a reset soon, and maybe this not lifetime or own grandchildren's 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 children. God knows. Maybe they'll have that information, and by that time they'll be able to reset it to what it's supposed to be. I don't know. Does it matter? It's just a reference of mind. That's all it really is. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, everything matters. Yeah. But it doesn't matter on the level of importance that we might attach to it. But it does matter. If it didn't matter, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have messed with it. Mm. <laughs> they they wouldn't have changed it in the first place. Whenever you see people putting things out of order, um, exchanging one thing for another, especially if the thing they're exchanging was natural, it was it was according to nature, the seasons, so forth. I mean, how is it now that we have a month named October? which should have been the eighth month because of Oct yep. or November oh, should have no. been the ninth, you know, December, yep. Deca, you know, right. should have been the 10th. How do we end up with 12 months mm -hmm. because of these guys, Julius and Augustus, you see? Mm. So what was that all about? All of that was political. It was regional and it was ego driven. Mm. I have to be represented in his, in the history of time. Mm. And how mm -hmm. I disturbed time, you know. So much of what we're dealing with in terms of Western academics is almost purely ego driven. From the wars that were started, the conquests and these things, these things are really <clears throat> driven by certain people wanting to put their stamp on history as the biggest, the baddest, and the best that have ever done it and got away with it. And you can almost you can almost loop all of them in the same ring, that same ring. In the Quran, Allah gives it to you in a single word, Iblis. Mm. That's what they're operating on, the Iblisian mm. ideology. I am better mm. than he. I have to conquer yep. him. He doesn't know what to do with the world. I, he doesn't know what to do with his land. So I have to conquer his land. He doesn't know what to do with his woman. So I got to take her too, you know. <laughs> so it's all... Uh, 
you know, the Quran is such a wonderful book. Uh, and hopefully more and more Muslims will understand as we go into the future that the Quran is also a book of code language. It's coded language. It doesn't mean that you can't read it. It only means that you have to qualify to read it. You know, if you're taking code in mathematics or in computer language or whatever, and you're taking code, you don't get the average dude to just jump into that. I can't just jump into code. I don't know what, you know, you know, what, what, what is that? How, I don't know. I can, I can operate a computer, but I can't put one together. Maybe you can. Mm -hmm. I can't put a computer together because I don't know all of these different facets that mm -hmm. uh, take me deeper into the insight of what it's composed of. So it's the same thing with the Quran. Why would Allah mm -hmm. do something less than what humans do when mm -hmm. they want you to understand something that's deep, something that's intricate, something that if you mess up, you you blow up. You know, he, just any old Joe is not out there messing around with nuclear war, war uh, uh, armament armaments. They're not just out there. You know that. What is this? Let's drop it from a ten story building and see what happens. <laughs> well, that's what people are doing with the Quran because the Quran was never. Listen to this carefully. This is actually the first time I'm saying this in public like this. The Quran was never meant to be put in the hands of doop de doops. The masses. The whole yeah. Point, glory. Yeah, was never meant for that purpose. The Quran <clears throat> was meant to be put in the hands of people who in history would be considered by the term initiates, if we're dealing with the English language. If we're dealing with the Quranic language, then it's called Abd or Ibad. Ibadullah or Abdullah. Abd is not just some slave or a servant that's putting his forehead on the ground trying to get a black mark. That's not what the Quran means by the term Abd. These are terms that go way back into antiquity. They're related to other words in other languages, but the Semitic languages, the Afroasiatic languages have captured the essence of these meanings more than other people because they were closer to nature. In terms of their observance, they were closer to nature. They were watching the stars. That's how they became the best astrologists in ancient Sumeria and Mesopotamia and these places. They were watching the, they weren't watching MTV. <laughs> you know, they weren't That's watching the, the you know the BET awards. <laughs> you know, these are the mm. things that that have us fascinated. But those people they couldn't watching. wait. They couldn't wait for it to get dark. So that yep. they could take whatever instruments, and even before they had instruments, they just did it with their bare eyes. What's this, what is this mm. out here? They see mm. what the differences were from day to day. They 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 clock it. They write it down what the differences is. Mm. Oh, it moved, and they they get the little you know primitive tool, and they start. Oh, this has moved an inch, you know, to the right. So what does that mean? And they began to evaluate all of this information. How many of us are doing that? And I'm not even talking about people who are reading the Quran. I'm talking about what ancient humans did. Thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, they were observing the prophets. There's not a prophet in the Quran or in the Bible who was not an astronomer, and it's capitalized in the narrative on Ibrahim and how he watched the stars, looking for that perfection that he knew Rab was responsible for. So he saw the stars. He, he they were so beautiful. They were lined up. They were sparkling in the dark and then he saw <laughs> one fall and he said this can't be my rub because mm -hmm. he knew that there was something connected with being the rub that had to do with absolute perfection and the evolution of perfection mm -hmm. a, an infant is a perfect infant but he's not an adult he has to continue to grow and evolve he's perfect for the level that he's on so that's what this term Abd was referring to, that there were certain people who were designated in ancient societies, um, not beginning with ancient Egypt, but Sumeria is older. These other civilizations are older, but they had the same modus operandi. They would study the patterns. That's what all the fitra is. You've heard me say that, that the word fitra and the word pattern are the same word. Exchange the F for the P. Right? It's the same word. Take off the N on the N as a suffix. So it's really just P-T-R-F-T-R. -T -T it's the same word, fitra, pattern. And that's what they would study. Today, science calls it pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. You can't know anything without understanding something regarding its pattern. 
Mm. You can how are you gonna know human growth when you don't know the patterns that are clocked into human growth and development? How do you know that's a baby? Because you're looking at the patterns. What it looks like. How do you know that's an embryo? Because the head is bigger than the rest of the body. You know, you these are patterns that when yep. we see them over and over and over again, we recognize them as the truth concerning that particular thing. So yep. it's the same thing. Um with the observation of the skies, Allah tells you that in the skies, as Samawat, and in the earth, and Arat, and in us, he said, there are instructing signs called Ayat. And he said, but most people disregard the instructions, paraphrasing a little bit. Most people don't pay any attention to the instructions. So if you're not paying attention to the instructions, you are not in that group of people called the Ibad. The initiates, you're being initiated into knowledge when you study these patterns. Mm. And it's the initiation into the knowledge that is the huda, the guidance for you. Again, Muslims think, oh, all you got to do is take shahadatain and poof, you're in, buddy. You're in the club now. No, you're not. There's nothing in the Quran like that. There's no hocus pocus in the Quran. There's no abracadabra. That came out of Jewish thought. Abracadabra. Allah corrects that misnomer by giving us kun fayakun, mm. be and it becomes. Mm. But the thing that it becomes is clocked into the letters that form the words kun. Well, see, we're so simple. We don't think these things have this level of deep meaning. You know, that's just two consonants, kun, K-N. What is that? Well, what is it in your English language? See, now you start making consonantal connections. What words in English have K-N? Can you think of one? K and N. K and N. Yeah, just put a different vowel in the middle. Just take out the U in Kun and put a different vowel, uh, an English vowel. Oh, okay. Kin. Yeah, you got Kin. Yeah. yeah. So you, you got, you got kin. kin. Kin, yeah. Yep. What, what, what's Kin? What is that? Your uh, offspring. Yeah. Your offspring. Yeah. That's how you got here, and that's how you'll stay here. Kun <laughs> fayakun. That's why it's be. You can't be without those principles that are clocked into that word. Kun. The K. And once you know what the K means, palm of the hand. Yep. Half. That's correct. Once you know what the noon means in this regard, C. Right? Then the seed has to first be in the palm of the hand of the farmer for the farmer to get continued replenishment in his field. Mm. You got to go to the farm with the seed in your hand. I mean, now, you you know, they put it in a wheelbarrow, whatever they do, or in mm -hmm. the back of an animal with some tool or something that they strapped to them. But originally, it was the seed in the, the palm of the hand that was grasping the seed. And what you had in your hand was necessary for further growth, development, evolution, replenishment, proliferation, whatever word you attach to the word seed. Whatever seed means for you, whatever it implies, it's in that concept of kun. So Allah is not just creating things like the Bible describes, you know, on the first day he created the dead, and the second day, and you know, on the seventh day he rested. No. When Allah says kun, He's clocking into what he's bringing into being. He's clocking into it the means for it to replenish, propagate, regenerate. See, all of that. Make sense? Yep. Yeah, so that's that's kun. And that is in your fam family relationships that we call kin. And we put a D on it and call it kind. He's my kind. And kind has another connection because you're supposed to be kind to your kin. Mm. That's a Quranic principle also. And that fire kindles or that's how you can put it. But yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying all of that at the outset just to set the pace for how I'm uh, encouraging learners to think. I'm not a guru. You know, I'm not the great Osho 
or whoever the cast name was. You know, I'm not sad guru yeah. and those guys. Yeah. I, didn't, what, I don't do that's not what I do. I admire them for whatever yeah. they give, but that's not what I do. They don't teach you how to think. Nope. On the most part. They don't teach you how they tell they teach you what they know. They tell you what they know, but they don't teach you how to get what they got. I'm trying to teach you how to get what I got plus. I want you to bring back something that I ain't got so I can have some of what you found. So that's what this nunetics thing is. You know, it's the propagation of thoughts that are designed to bring people's minds back into a concentration on first things first. And for us, first things first, our nature, what, what we found in nature when we got here. If you make it back to nature, you won't have to worry about a lot of what's getting ready to happen in this society, especially in this part of the world. There's going to be some shibuye, as I said. There's going to be some stuff. They're clocking it. So you're talking about the calendar? We're just sitting back thinking God is doing it. God is punishing us. This is the, the these are the last days, and this is the you know the great tribulation and the whatever the Christians think Jesus is gonna come back up and we're gonna be rising up out of the graves and you know we're thinking all kinds of stuff because they put that stuff in scripture, air quotes around scripture. They put that stuff in scripture because they knew that they had the power to make it seem like it was going to happen or happening and then you'd think that this is god speaking and then they say we speak for god and then you have to look at them for the rest of your life and if you want to get out of this give me your money give me your gold give me your silver give me your time give me your sweat you know the because priesthood. as a priest there you go that priesthood again right those those, those wily ones so you, if you want to know how to get around them, you have to go to the original source of information. And Allah tells you it's him indirectly, directly, I should say, but indirectly, it's the things that you study. He put it for you to study, ayat. See, the word ayat has the alif in the beginning, the first letter of the alphabet, and the uh, yeah, actually, if you don't pluralize it, it's just ayah, ayah. So it has alif and then the last letter, yeah. <laughs> that's a sign too what, what is a sign from God everything in English we say everything from A to Z <laughs> mm. he's left nothing out it's like Prego spaghetti sauce it's in there I don't know, you, you're probably too young to remember that commercial <clears throat> but uh, hold on one second I'm having a little problem with my camera yeah there's a little wire issue here but it'll be right yeah so you, you follow what I'm saying yeah. now your, your shakes and your shakers and all those folks out there who no reams and reams of Arabia. They're not going to be able to tell you what I just told you about the word ayat. Because Allah sent that to me. That was my gift. And I'm sharing it with you and everybody else who listens. That inspiration. And I, don't have, I don't have to prove it from some scholar that that's what it means. Follow your common sense and logic. Here's one word. The only word that begins and ends with the first and last letter of the Arabic alphabet. Go figure, right? Um, there's a few things I want to say to you before we get into anything technical. Um, because I was admiring your quest for these areas of information that you asked me about. Uh, Reba, you asked me about, we're going to go over that in a minute. Not going to keep you all night. You know I can, but I, yes, <laughs> I can. <do. laughs> so, so. I'm going to say some things to you again that I haven't said to any general audience or probably to any audience, not even to individuals. Have I said some of the things I'm going to say to you and I'm saying it to you specifically for a reason that you'll have to figure out. All you got to do is think on it. Think on what I'm telling you. Then you, you grow more in the, what your role is. You are not Joe ordinary. And that's not me, you know, doing this to you. What I'm trying to do is encourage the right level of assistance, not for me personally, for the world that needs what you got. It's not just your wife, your family, children, friends, masjid, whatever. It's not just those people who need what you have. 
but you have to be able to secure it within your own boundaries first. If you have livestock and people around you are starving, what sense would it make for you not to secure your livestock? Mm. You got to build fences, borders, things so that, you know, people don't just indiscriminately come and take what you got because they will if they think it's a free for all. So my information is not free for all information because the information in the Quran is not free for all. Allah did not open up the Quran for everybody. And this is where Muslims make the mistake. They think it is. They think all they have to do, like I said earlier, is say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, although that combination statement, as you know, is not in the Quran. Mm -hmm. But they think they were taught that that's all they have to do and then learn rituals. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all you got. That's all that's left. Just learn rituals. <laughs> Learn these rituals, <laughs> you know, yeah. make, sure you, make sure you pay that annual tax and that annual <laughs> zakat and, you know, and all that. And right. then, then Allah is going to bless you. And, Allah, and a matter of fact, you don't really even have to study, brother, you know, we, mm -hmm. we study for you. That's the priesthood. Wisdom, wisdom comes after 20 years of hard self-discipline of, of you heard physical it. ritual players. You heard it. You've heard it. Yeah. Like that opens uh, up yeah. some, <laughs> some portal to the beyond, you know, and if you do yep. these rituals every day, faithfully, whether you're tired, sleepy, busy or not, just stop what you're doing. The most important meeting in the world, Russia has their finger on the nuclear bomb and, uh, mm. you know, and, you know, and, and you're in that meeting, but you're Muslims and you know right. that the time has come now. Allah, so you get this call in your ear. That's not nowhere in the Quran. It's a Allahu Akbar thing. <laughs> That's no in the Quran. But in your head, you know, oh, 12, 12 17, time for Luhr, you know? And then, okay, everybody stop. Take your finger away from that button. I have to go do a ritual. Yep. <laughs> or I'm it in the a dopamine hit. Huh? It's a dopamine hit. Oh, for sure. With, with that First, mini duel do, and what happens is you, you take that cold water, warm water, and you do it three times yeah and i forget the exact term it's the diver's reflex mm -hmm. automatically instantaneously uh, uh takes you out of that fight flight or fight mode fight or flight yeah yeah the uh, reptilian the nervous system, that, that's right and then yeah. now it's dopamine and i remember when i started doing all those i was mm -hmm. so calm yeah and now that i read, read up on the science that the dopamine yeah. hit, so but look at look at what it did though mm -hmm. it took yeah. you it took you from the reptile brain to the mammalian brain and drop you off. It didn't take you any higher than that. It didn't take you up to the thinking brain because mm. you're not thinking. Yep. <laughs> you're not thinking. All of this is memorization, rote. You're not really thinking about what you're saying when you open up with al fatiha and go into a short surah or whatever, and then Allahu Akbar. They don't even know what Allahu Akbar means. They don't know what ruku means. They don't know what sajda means. They don't know what these positions mean. They don't know why they say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the right and then assalamu alaikum to, to the left. And they don't even know that assalamu alaikum is not in the Quran for them to recite. Right. Assalam is in there as an attribute of Allah. And out of the mouth of only one individual, and that's the baby Isa, Jesus, he says assalam. Hmm. But other than that, when Allah gives it to us as a greeting for each other, even in paradise, it's assalamu alaikum. Never mm. assalam alaikum. Otherwise, it's the opposite. They, we have been bamboozled when it comes to these rituals. <laughs> yeah, Malcolm X used to say, kicked in the pants, bamboozled, led mm. astray. <laughs> mm. you know, I'm just applying that to how they have taught the average Muslim in the world. That's over a billion people. More than that, two billion people, right? Or whatever, a billion, one, a billion, three hundred thousand, whatever they say. <clears throat> number. Yep. Um, so, Scripture is predicated upon three notions, or I call, I'd call them themes. The first one is that initiation process I told you. Being qualified for the wisdom is what I'm talking about. That's why Muhammad had companions. They had to be qualified. He didn't send just anybody out into the field to start talking about the Quran. He was being qualified with the download of information, then mm -hmm. he had to give it to his closest companions in increments. In fact, I think there was one, I think it might've been uh, Umar, if I remember correctly. He didn't even want you 
to bring him anything additional until he had first memorized and gave great contemplation to what he had already received. Even if it was a brand new revelation, they could run in there, oh, Muhammad just got a new revelation. Listen, no, he said, whoa, 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 no, no, no. You're going to burden me with that. Don't do that. Mm. So he had to give deep thought to what he had already received. That's the purpose of the Quran, to make you think on that level, not to make you make some ritual, something that you don't even remember. If I asked you right now, what surah did you recite in uh, uh, Fajr this morning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I just recited a surah. The only one you can tell me you recited for sure is Al Fatiha. And there's no pre there's no there's no mandate even for that in the Quran. That's right. So all of these things have come down to us that have not been sanctioned or recommended even by Allah in the Quran, which means that man stuck his toe into this. He's wiggling his toes in this knowledge because man is always, because of that Iblisian ego, always attempting to show you what he knows, even if Allah is telling you what he knows. He looks at what Allah knows and he says, well, I think I think I can kind of go toe to toe with what Allah just said there. <laughs> let me let me throw this out there, see how the people groove to it, you know. And they think that they're benefiting the people, but really what they're doing subconsciously is competing with Allah. And that's in the Quran. That's why Allah says, bring a surah like it. Come on, bring, bring a surah like it. Bring 10. Then Allah whittles it down to one. Yeah, just bring one. And tells you behind that that they cannot do it. They're going to try. And they're still trying. So when they give you all of this extra stuff to do, that's what they're doing. They're competing with Allah. Yeah, Allah told you that. And you know where they got this? And I, 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 boy, oh boy, I don't know how far this uh, piece of the, the conversation will travel. <clears throat> I won't do anything without your permission when it comes to showing parts of this. But they got that habit, that bad habit of <clears throat> augmenting, attempting to augment what Allah gave us. They got it from the from the from the the disobedient portion of Jewish thinkers, of the Jews. Not all Jews, because all Jews don't operate on that level. All Jews are sat, most Jews are satisfied just to live their mundane lives and raise their families and that kind of thing. They're in a precarious situation over there in the so-called land of Israel, but that's another story for another night. The point is, is that as religious people, they're satisfied with Yom Kippur, you know, and Hanukkah and, you know, their rituals and their holidays and their family festivals and, and Moses on the mountain. And all. They're satisfied with that. <clears throat> they're not trying to argue with anybody about that. And in fact, those same Muslims, uh, pardon me, those same Jews of that religious um, mind, they lived, you know, they lived hundreds of years beside, right besides Muslims in different parts of the world, Spain, if we want to start there. You know, they lived in different parts, of, even in where they are now in so-called Israel. They've been there. They were there for a long time before the whole skirmish thing and the, gra the land grab started happening and, and the wealth, you know, the stealing of wealth and the positioning themselves for leadership over not only themselves, but over everybody that they could come in contact with. They wanted to be the leader over everybody, not just Israel, not just the Jews, not just the Palestinians. They wanted to be leaders over everybody in the world. That's in the Bible. That's in the Torah. And it is certainly in the uh, Talmud, their secondary source. That's their Hadith. I should say that our Hadith is their Talmud. Same thing. Yeah, because yeah, the, the, their Talmud came first. Yeah, They had the first ha the hadith set. <laughs> Before Muhammad was even here, they had their Talmud operating in the background. So we have to get back to what works for the human structure. They've turned us into a political and economic structure so that when the leaders of the ummah look out at the muslims they see government they see politics how to manipulate people politically and how to manipulate people economically they don't see your true human self because they don't know your true human self they don't know themselves as humans what we were just talking about in terms of the triune brain that i always talk about that reptilian brain that you spoke of 
and the emotional brain, the mammal brain, and the neocortex brain, the rational, um, moral, rational brain, they don't know what that is on the most part. So how can they address your human concerns when they don't even know what a human is? They think you're a politic and an economic. You are rules and regulations and money in most of their eyes. That's why we have the problem that we have in the Muslim world because they have no clue. They have no clue. They don't even know that in the term Muslim, in the consonants, in the term Muslim, in Salima, are the consonants that are addressing parts of the brain that Allah is attempting to activate. They don't know that. I'm giving you some drips and drabs so you go back and study what I'm telling you. Seen, lam, meme are speaking to aspects of your true human development, internal development. So when you begin to understand nunetics, as I've been teaching it, you can immediately place those letters within the context of your human frame, the human frame, not the political frame anymore, not the economic frame. The political and the economic are to fall into place within the broader frame of what you are as a human. And I know what they say. Black's Law Dictionary says that the term human means monster. Right. Yeah. And Instructor yeah, Benjamin right. Bilal says, yeah, you heard me. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me what I said. Tell, break, star. break it down for people who haven't heard it. It's the moon star. You are a monster. So it's That's right. Now, of those what, what does that moon represent in you? It's and maybe, I uh, don't know exactly how you put it, but what I do know is that the moon is a manly, man made dimly light. From what I understand, that's what yeah. the uh, moon yeah. represents. Yeah, moon and man are related as words. Yep. The MN, okay. <clears throat> and man means mind. You see the MN in mind also. So the moon, however, encourages us to meditate, to They use the word cogitate sometimes, you know, become cognizant of certain things right. because it happens at night and you're not moving around. You're not trying to take care of business or close a deal. So you got time now you're in front of your home or whatever. You're looking out the window or you're out in the field and it's a starry night and all of that. And, you, you know, it gives you a chance to contemplate and meditate. That's the purpose of that particular body of light to help you to think. Hmm. To reflect. I'm not going to say think. To reflect. Reflect means you're thinking on things that you already know. Thinking means you're gathering new information. Right? But reflecting, reflect. Re, do again. Flect. F-L-C-T. Take the T off. That's a feminine ending. Now you have F-L-C. The C is pronounced as a K sound. Flect. Right? It's not fleece. It's fleck. So it's really K sound or Q sound for us. So it's really okay. 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 And it's a surah called El Felak. Right. And it's <clears throat> speaking speaking to the daybreak. The dawn or the daybreak. So that means that whatever you're supposed to be doing is supposed to be ushering you into new light. So when you finish your salat, are you in? Are you are are you are you higher in in uh, knowledge and, and insight and all that just because you made a ritual? So how, how you understand what I'm saying? See, the words yeah. are giving you the importance of what Allah has delivered as information. When you dhikr, you're doing what the moon requests of you, as one who is revisiting knowledge. So Allah says in the Quran, when he uses dhikr, he says, and remember when, and then he gives a narrative about something, and remember when the people of Musa, and remember when Adams, you know, say, so he's using a variation on that dhakara, that dhikr thing, because the dhikr represents repetitive 
thoughts regarding things that you already know that you're revisiting so you can squeeze the lemon juice out of it. <laughs> you know how we do. We make some lemonade and we squeeze the lemon a little bit and then we throw the lemon away and it's got still like 60% juice in it. <laughs> yeah. Our, yeah. Mother said, our mother said, you better not throw away my lemon. You better use that lemon in something. Put it on the fish. Right. You know, do something. So that's yeah. what the dicker is. Dicker is squeezing the juice. Yep. Yeah. Right? So when we do dicker, then we just go subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. The average Muslim can't even tell you right away how many phalanges they have, and they count these all day long. Hmm. The average Muslim can't even tell you what a phalange is. I'm talking about people who grew up speaking English. The average Muslim has not truly done what Allah asks us to do in studying what's in the skies, what's in the earth, and what's in us that are similar to what's in the sky and in the earth. They don't even think about these designs in the human hand. Look at these designs. Other people jumped on it, and they call it heartline. Heart yeah, yeah, lifeline, heartline. Heart line. Yep. Well, that's a yep. that's that's fitrah, man. How come I can't study that? I study that. They call me a Catholic. a Muslim. That was this, that was that was one of the first things in uh, Islamic school that uh, at a young age I, I was told that's haram and uh, what else? Yeah. There? How was that? Hold on. Zodiac, zodiac, zodiac sign. So, very young conditioning. It goes, goes up against the brain. Yeah. So, yeah. people like you and me, these are the things, these are the walls that we have to dismantle because they're fabricated. They're false um, separations that keep us away from the real knowledge. Excuse me. It keeps us away from the real knowledge. So my thing is that I keep coming with my with my chisel and my sledgehammer. And when I can just sledgehammer a whole brick out of the wall, I do it. If I have to just chisel because people are too sensitive, then I just... Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I lost you for a couple of seconds. I can hear you. Okay, you got me now? Yeah. You said the last thing I heard was too sensitive. Yeah, yeah. I said there are some people who are too sensitive for you to come with a sledgehammer to knock the wall down. So you have to go there with your chisel. And sometimes you just got to sit near the wall and pretend <laughs> pretend to be filing your nails, you know, yep. at the same time. You remember, I don't know if you saw a movie called Shawshank Redemption. Yes. yes. Yeah. So you know what I'm a talking about. Time. Yeah. How long, long did it take for him to dig himself out of that prison, man? You know, <laughs> and be back on time for the prison check for the guard, you know, to pass yep. by. It, right. A lot of wisdom in that movie. Yeah. Um. So that's 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 where we are with what we do. So we have initiation which is qualification. Okay. Yeah. We have initiation, which is qualification. We have meditation, for lack of a better term. And meditation, the key to understanding what that is, and it's all, all of it is a part of the salat. The meditation is a part of the salat, but they've divorced meditation from our salat and they've made it just pure ritual. Just pure physical movements and words that we don't understand in a language that we don't even speak on the most part. So meditation is speaking to the med. When you think about the word med, what do you think? What what, what comes to mind? Medic, med, middle. Yeah. So that's what your salad is supposed to be doing for you. It's supposed to be your medic. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be your medicine. Mm. It's supposed to bring you back to the middle. We talk about the middle path. Sirat al-Mustaqim is called the middle, it's called the straight path, but it's also known as the middle path. And Allah says, and uh, protect what? the middle salat. And what's in the middle of the brain? <laughs> there you go. Because that's where they aim their targets, at your middle brain your limbic or your mammalian, your emotional and memory. See? That brain, the brain that re remembers Allah, the brain that remembers, boy, I have family members that need me. I have a community that I need to build. That's that's all going on in the middle brain. The middle brain is the most important brain out of those three essential brains. So when we stop feeling for each other, when we stop um, hmm. investing 
in the right emotional attitude that we should have when we deal with people outside of ourselves. You don't really need that emotional brain on the level that I'm talking about until you begin to go further out, venture further out from your family and your home and you start to deal with other people and their issues. We know how to deal with the wife. We know her. You know, we've been married 25 years, 50 years to somebody. You know, your children, you, they grew up in your house. They're all adults. Now, you know those children. You don't have to second guess them on the most part. But those people next door to you who just moved in, you can't deal with them on an intellectual level to begin with. When you meet them, you don't start reciting and chanting the Quran. I, yeah, maybe some of us do, but that's not how you, it's not how you reach them. See, you got to find some middle way of reaching their sensitivities. Hey, good morning, neighbor. You knew, you knew here, huh? Well, listen, man, if you need me to, you know, show you around the neighborhood, see, all that is an appeal to the limbic, the mammalian brain, the mammal brain, the brain that loves family life and community life. That's the mammal. That's not the snake. That's the mammal. You don't see a lot of snakes traveling together as such, unless they're on a serious mission <laughs> to go get, retrieve, bring back, and feast. But other than that, when you look at the the apes and the, the lions and the, the butterflies and the deer and all, you know, the rabbits, they're traveling as families mm. and they love each other. Big old lion snapping his cub. You know, he knows how much pressure that, you know, before he hurts him, he just yeah. slap him. You know, he's training him how to, how to be a hunter. That's right. Right. But all of that is a part of the mammalian brain. That animal does not have a cortex, a thinking brain. So all animals can do is operate from that middle brain. So this meditation is designed to bring that middle brain back to its proper coordinates. It has a GPS. It has a destination that it's trying to reach. When you think about Jannah, you don't think about anything academic. You don't think about sitting down in front of some sheikh or shaker that was here on earth with you and that, oh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is here. Let's go listen to it. You know, ain't nothing in the Quran that tell you to do that. Oh, Imam W. Muhammad, hey, man, can we get a khutbah from you? Why? <laughs> Aren't you where he is? <laughs> yeah, Jannah is appealing to that middle brain. In the Quran, it's called the middle garden. Allah talks about a middle. In the Bible, it talks about Midgard as the garden, mm -hmm. the middle garden. I think they got that out of ancient Babylonia because all of these scriptures are talking the same talk. The Quran just it gives you the, up, the the advanced version of it. You know, it's like you're trading in your car. You want the latest car. Well, that's what they trade in the Bible. And you, know, and you get the latest scripture, the Quran. Hmm. Now, once you get that latest scripture, you ain't gonna, you ain't going to busy yourself with trying to keep riding the ride that's been giving you problems. Yeah, I got a 1986 Buick. You know, but now I got me a whatever I want for 2000, you know, 24. I got my 2024 now. What am I going to go back to the Buick for? Unless I just go back to it for parts. If I need parts for somebody else or for another car of its make. Or if I just want to get a better idea of how cars are put together, I, that'll be my work car. I'll be up under that, under the hood, under the, you know, the body, the chassis. And the, I'm just, I'm not depending on this to get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. If I, if I truly need to be somewhere, I'm not going to depend on this thing to get me there. So likewise, we don't depend on the Bible and the Torah and Jesus and all. We don't depend on them as they are depicted in previous scriptures. We don't depend on the Upanishads and the, this and that. They're beautiful books saying a lot of beautiful things, but we don't depend on them for guidance. Mm. When the guidance is all around you, in the skies, in the earth, in you. But most people... Don't pay good paid attention. So all we got to do is pay attention. So sure, let me I left, keep going on and on. But yeah, talk back to me. You have to you have to forgive me. Give me two seconds. I left my charger in the car. I have my wife's laptop over here. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm here. Quick switch. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pause the recording. We get back to it when you get back. Recording in progress. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Oh, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, let me just uh, set the testing one, two, three. Can you speak, instructor? 
Yes, I can. Greetings. Good evening. Go. Good day. There we go. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Beautiful. All right. <clears throat> So just in continuing the point, which I believe is a very important point. Whenever Allah speaks in the Quran, he considers the audience that he's addressing. That's a very practical principle in Dawah. Don't just go bumping your gums and, you know, just because you know stuff, you won't tell people stuff. <clears throat> in a language mostly that they don't understand. We go among our relatives, I'm like, Alhamdulillah, you know, Salaam Alaikum, cousin, Alhamdulillah, Low Akbar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking mostly about my people. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's not the correct way to do that. Allah always considers the audience he's speaking to in the Quran. And Allah is always considering one or more parts of the triune brain when he speaks to human beings. Sometimes he's speaking to your instinctive brain, the fight or flight brain. Sometimes he's speaking to the emotional brain, the family minded brain, the community minded brain, the ummah brain. And other times he's speaking to the scholars directly for those who reason, for those who use the aql. Why do they not reason? Allah says, why do they not think? He's, he's, a, he's not appealing to the instinctive guy then. He's appealing to those people who um, have the capability of, of, of using reason, rational discourse, not emotional, blah, 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 blow your head off of you. No, no, that stuff that's going on over in the Middle East now. Yeah. It's not what the Quran is speaking to. That emotional uh, and uh, instinctive brain activity over there. They're not thinking that they discourage you thinking for yourself or making a rational decision. They want you to hear and obey. See, when Allah says we, we have heard and we obey, that's the instinctive brain in you. That's what your instincts do. They don't think about it. They don't think about things. They don't feel a certain way, but they just do it because it's in them to do it. Your heart doesn't think about whether it's right or wrong to, to, to pump blood. Your lungs don't think about the rights and the wrongs of breathing through your lungs. Your eyes don't say, let me make a rational decision before I blink or before I my nose runs as I have a cold. No, those things are instinctive in you. Your instincts, your, your 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 unconscious mind is controlling those things. So Allah in the Quran is this is a whole course, and it's, I'm going to start teaching on it beginning early next year. The Quran, as it addresses the triune brain, the three part brain in all humans, right? Allah says to certain people when they're meeting out justice. Allah says, and do not let your hearts be moved in the dispensing of this justice. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, right? But in other words, when you have to make a decision in a court situation or personal situation, Allah says, don't, don't consider that you, that's your cousin Pookie that deserves that punishment. And you grew up together. Your own boys, you tired, you tired, but Pookie, well, Pookie done raped somebody. Now he was a child molester, you find out. You, you can't say, well, that's you know, my cousin. But if it was your neighbor, you'd be like off with his head, off with his genitals. You know what I'm saying? So look at what Allah is saying. Allah is saying, in that instance, you have to appeal to the instinctive brain. What would your instincts do? Your intuition, your gut. Yeah. You leave him here for that one more day. And you have pity, you have a pity party with him and all that. And next day you find out he done did it three times over. It's your own child. See? That happens. Yes. You know these stories better than I do probably because they're in the news and they're in our families. We're going through this. So Allah gives you the remedy for that. But he's appealing to your instinctive brain. See? When he tells you how to be in warfare, he's appealing to your fight or flight instincts. Mm. Do this, don't do that. You 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 did that last time, and we almost lost lost the profit. You running after the booty, emotions, see, <laughs> celebration. 
No, Allah says some make the salat and others watch. See, he's appealing to different parts of the human brain based on the people who have been initiated into that level of activity. Everybody's not a soldier. Everybody's not a mother and father. So you have to find your spot is the point. That's what the Quran is here for. It's your personal GPS for your human life and where you fit in in the fitwa. Again, you don't hear Muslims teaching like this. And I don't blame them for not teaching like this. They never knew to teach like this. I'm just finding out how to teach like this. You don't know what you don't know. No, but once you know, guess what that makes you if you don't move on? Responsible. And guilty. Because mm. you're depriving people of an essential knowledge now. It's not just hap happenstantial. It's not just how to wash your hands in wudu that we're talking about. It's about how to wash and clean up your life. Mm. And and your your pastor, your rabbi, your imam had that knowledge and he wouldn't pass it on to you because he wanted you coming to him like his personal gopher and donkey and all of that. And he wanted to keep you there. He doesn't want you to start reading because then you might become smarter than him. Mm. And people start saying, have you heard the brother? Yeah, he gave a very nice khutbah when you were away, imam. And the imam is like, oh, really? <laughs> like, Did I give him permission, you know? <laughs> to tell the truth, to teach the truth. Did I give him permission? That's what Pharaoh said, right? He told that to Musa. He said, believe in God, believe in this Allah before I give you permission? Oh, how, yeah. how, how hardy is that? That's the epitome of arrogance. Man, oh man, if we only understood, and we're going to understand one day, some of us, how important what the Quran is saying on these um issues uh and I, I keep bringing it up because we've moved i believe into a day and time where this level of quranic insight is going to be necessary and it's going to be life-saving literally life-saving information because there's a group of people there's a mindset on this earth right now that wants to whittle down human population to almost nothing to what they call manageable Get rid of all the miscreants. We don't need this number of people on earth anymore. When I heard that Henry Kissinger was dead, I, I, I almost celebrated. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred years. This, <laughs> this was his agenda. Well, now he's off to prison. Huh? Now he's off to prison, whatever that may be. Oh, the Sijin, that prison, the prison of hellfire. But I don't know that. I don't make those decisions. I don't yep. make executive decisions. I let Allah handle that. I just know he was a hell on earth for a lot of people here while he was living. He made it to 100 years old. He did what he did based on what he knew. And only Allah can judge him. But I'm telling you from my viewpoint and vantage point, he was the major advocate for the depopulation of planet earth, that agenda. And what now has now turned into agenda, what is it, 2015 now? If you know about that. Yeah, there's an agenda. 2030. Yeah, they, they, they keep, they keep pushing it forward because their calendar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that fake calendar got in the yep. way. Yep. And they said, well, wait a minute. If we calculate back from when this happened to now, we calculate back from BC, AD, BC. They messed up from the very beginning. Hmm. How are we going to be in the year 2023 when, when the BC switched over to AD? They didn't count the first year. <laughs> it's not in there. So we 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 shouldn't be in 2020. So that's just the falsehood of all the stuff that they're that they're pushing. And if they were doing things correctly, why did we need a leap year? Did God make a mistake? I don't know what's up with that. Every four years, we got our. And and why do we need uh? Uh, to keep changing the clock back and forth, an hour back, an hour forth, spring, spring back, or, you know, fall forward or whatever. They, uh, why do we need, what, did Allah make a mistake? No, they needed to control time. While also, by the time, inna insana la fi khusr, certainly the human being is experiencing loss. I mean, just... Loss upon loss, except I, I was... for, except for, illa See, I want to be in that group. 
I don't want to be in this lost group. Except for those who have professed faith or iman, and those who promote the reconciliation of things that were intended to be together. That's my paraphrase of what that's saying. Salihat is not just being good. It's not just have faith and do good works. No, Salihat, as Salihat represents the reconciliation of things in the fitrah that Allah intended to be together that had gotten artificially separated like males and females in our day and time. Mm. They're trying to get you to marry a man. You know. <laughs> they want the drag queen to tell you who you should love. You know, love mm. everybody telling that to your five-year-old in, in school. I know. <sighs> things have gotten so haywire. And Muslims <clears throat> are just sitting back pa pa passively like, oh, there's nothing I can do, you know. When in Rome, you know. <laughs> you're in Rome. <laughs> you're in Rome. You're in Greece. You're in Egypt. You're in all of these places. The only place you're not is in your own human self. Because they rob you of that when you were born. You mentioned that in your email with That's the right. social security and all of that. They rob you of your real identity as soon as you come here. That's right. You become you the the trustee of that uh of that uh entity, yeah. what we think is a social security number. And that is equity on paper, but yeah. I won't get it. Yeah, and uh, at Riba. The straw man. They straw told man. you the whole story in the movie, The Wizard of Oz, if you've yep. seen that. Yeah, yep. they tell you the whole story. Yep. Yeah, the farmer, scarecrow, right? The industrialist, the tin man. Hmm. And you get in... Uh, you get an EIN number when you become a corporation. They're about the business of creating corporations. And what is that? The artificial you. Dead entity. If it don't work out, scrap it. Get another one. And then, of course, <clears throat> the cowardly lion. These, these fakers and fraudulent people in government. Pretending like they're the biggest, baddest things in sliced bread but he's a coward. And then there's Dorothy, see? Dorothy is a cold word in that language. And it means several things. See, this plan for ruling the masses through this particular system of artificial identities, it began during the time of Theodore Roosevelt. It's actually when this movie came out. And if you flip Theodore backwards, you get Dorothy. Mm. And you also get an illusion, not illusion, allusion to uh, God, Theo. Theodore, the door to God. So these people who are in high positions of masonry and shriners, you know, and that kind of Freemasons and all, they know what I'm telling you. Like the back of their hands. Allah says they know this like they know the back of their hands. Allah tells you that. And he's talking to the Jews when he says it, to the Yahud. He said, Muhammad, they know what you're talking about like they know the back. So it's another place that says they know this like they know their own sons. Oh, how sensitive is that word, sons? to most Jews. And this is not a rant against Jews. I'm not talking about the average Jew. The average Jew has no idea what this is about and what, what has really happened. He only knows what they told him after he was born and given that covenant thing, the people of God, the chosen of God, mm. to the exclusion of everybody else on the planet. You are the chosen of God and you're chosen forever. doesn't matter what you do. doesn't matter where you go. doesn't matter who likes it, who doesn't like it. You are still the chosen of God. Now, that's not in the Torah, but that's in their Talmud teachings. That's in their ancillary stuff that they came behind the Torah with and said, well, let's 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 powder pack this concept. And you might say, well, how does uh, Instructor Bilal get the authority to speak like this about a, another people? Because I used to be that other people. I was born into the Jewish religion. 
I'm not talking from what books told me. I'm telling you what rabbis told me. <laughs> I was little. <laughs> All the way up till I was 13, I was going to, to, you know, visiting the yeshiva. I never went to a Jewish school, but I visited the yeshiva. But they, they're called the shul, you know, that's the word school for the, the Jews. I used to go to the Sabbath. I used to uh, do the, the Hanukkah and, and Yom Kippur. I used to do all of that. So I know the I know the lang- I know the concepts, and I know mm-hmm. what I was told as a supposed Jew, who because of my skin was never really fully accepted, accepted. into the circle. See, so they they can't they can't uh, give me explanations for something, believing that I don't know the language. I I know the language. So I gave you two, initiation, meditation. Initiation brings you in the door, meditation focuses you. It, it, it centers your concerns, meditation. See, people think when they meditate that they just have to close their eyes and, you know, and then home, you know, home, you know, tune into a television channel. <laughs> <Not care. laughs> You, you you come out of that looking at Sesame Street in your head, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, eyes fluttering and all that. No, they think it's got to be in the dark, in a closet somewhere. But if they don't know anything else about the history of our prophet, the first thing they tell us is that he was meditating in a cave. Called the Hira in Mecca. So you, you mean he never meditated again in the next 23 years? He never taught anybody else the value of secluding yourself from time to time and going into yourself and coming out with the thoughts. But what he was doing was centering his focus. That's all meditation is. You can do it sitting at your breakfast table. I do. I can do it driving. But there's more. Hmm? Go ahead. Finish your thought. No, I was going to say, it's better if you're in a singular place and nothing disturbing you. But not necessarily. And the people in the world, how are you going to do that in Gaza? I mean, they yeah. got to stop. They got to stop the practice now because the bombs are falling. No, you, you step up the temple. You can do it on the battlefield. That Quran tells you that. On the battlefield, you're making salat, but not that ritual thing they're telling you. Mm. <laughs> That's all I add to it. He ain't talking about that ritual thing. That'll get you blown up and <laughs> blown away. No. You have to understand what's supposed to be going on in here, in you, in your center. Concentration. That's all meditation is. Con with, con means with, centration, central focus. That's right. It means you have to learn how to block out all other concerns that are not on the list of Allah's concerns. (laughs) Speak. And that is where science, the beauty of science, also complements this. Not that science uh, validates it. <clears throat> you have on the one hand Dr. Hani, who uh, has uh, used the term from the Quran, istijab. If I'm if I'm mis- if, if I'm correct, uh, spiritual silence. Mm-hmm. That's one practice where you shut everything off. You go into a seclusion. Uh, that way you can center your entire being. Some people are so out of frequency, so out of resonance, so it's such in a low, not necessarily a low vibration, but in a bad vibration that they just need to, they just need to go in nature, just go relax, calm down, it just, just decompress in order to yeah. even concentrate. There's a lot, there's a lot to Reconnect. it. That's right. Yeah. There is a practice in the esoteric world, or not necessarily, but uh, uh, folks, they just do a, uh, even in high-end athletes, they do uh, uh, they focus on a center center point of a circle, mm-hmm. and then they just make sure they don't look anywhere else for thirty seconds, sixty seconds. That's and what this does is it conditions and trains the brain to focus. That way, when you look at something or you get engage in a certain practice, you now have literally conditioned and skilled your brain to focus. Yes, and this is this is where. Uh, there was a disconnect uh, in the past couple of years of my life where I, I did I you know I thought focus uh, focus just focus you know get 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 right into it just start doing it take action focus no it's more more than just that it's yeah. an actual skill that you learn as if you were to communicate eloquently to be able to 
uh, polish your shoes beautifully. I mean, there, there's a, there's an art to it. So there's a practice called, and thank you, doctor, or if you can call him doctor, but Andrew Huberman, My man. for the for the tool called he's space brilliant. time bridging. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's space brilliant. time bridging is is the practice of closing your eyes, focusing using three deep breaths, slow deep breaths, just on your sensation of your body. So what you're doing is you're focusing on your on your body. Then you do a couple of other things, and this is all. This all can be done in less than three minutes. I mean, I do it in two minutes every single morning, and I have benefited yes. from being able to focus. Yes. This, this this specific practice has scientifically proven to <laughs> to be uh, to let you focus between goals, mm -hmm. both in space and time, mm -hmm. so that you can focus uh, that you can transition between different tasks. Yeah. It's called space time bridging. Yeah. For anyone who's interested, uh, look up Dr. Andrew Huberman. He's uh, in my space new book. time bridging. Yeah, he's in my second book on the yeah. select that's coming out in about another week or Love less. It. Yeah, Andrew Huberman. Yeah, so. H U B E R M A N for those of you who are Googling. All right. And uh, he's made some very pertinent points concerning quote unquote prayer and the value of that spiritual connection. Hmm. See, when we say to connect, anytime we talk about connecting, we're talking about energy. Even if I shake your hand, it's an exchange of energy. If I exchange glasses with you from across the room, I'm connecting with you. You know, in the hood, you know, we used to look across at the other guy who we knew was in a different gang. And we just, hmm. you know, what I mean? <laughs> I'm connecting with him with my neck. <laughs> <The next. laughs> yeah. but see the value of the neck and see we, we, we look at these things we don't play them cheap now listen con means with with whatever n-e-c means nectar. which is really yeah how is the nectar secured through the connection with the bees the bees have to connect with the flower see all of this has to do with the Manipulation of energy is the point. And in the human body, the neck, especially with that vein running through it, that juggler, is the point where blood is pumped preferentially first up to the brain. When, when, the, when the blood is recycled and purified through the liver and et cetera, and it comes through those four chambers of the heart before it goes to the rest of the body, it's given preference to the brain. That's how important the brain is, as Allah created it. So it has to make sure that the brain has all of the nutrients and all of what it needs to keep that great thinking capacity operating. Right? Something happened, you get hit in the head too hard and you lose consciousness, then what happens to the rest of the body? So what's more important, the body? You can get shot in the knee and still have consciousness and still make it <laughs> to the hospital. But it's not that fortunate sometimes. If you get hit in the head, you then you have to have somebody else's conscious mind working on your behalf because the brain is responsible for consciousness, right? So the neck is the connection in the body that feeds that purified blood preferentially first up to the brain. And then once the brain gets its 85% of that purification goes to the brain, then it goes down and begins to circle around the body in a loop fashion. It goes all the way down and hits your tippy toes. Your, 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 your pinky toe gets some of the blood, but it gets it in proportion to its needs. <clears throat> Remember the Marxism thing, you know, each according to his need, you know, hmm. they, they're just corrupting the fits wrong. But your toe gets some, your knees get some, your calves, all the rest of this is zodiac that we call the human body is really a zodiac. And see, if you study the zodiac as it is connected to the human body, it takes all of the mysticism out of it and the mystery and the, 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 the you know, the fanatical kinds of Zodiac yeah. and the, the gods and the Thor and the, this one mm -hmm. and that. takes mm -hmm. all of that out of it because the original Zodiac is simply the human body and how that human body relates to the rest of the universe. That's what Allah is saying when he says, I have created Ayat in the skies, instructions, instructing signs. 
ayat in the earth, instructing, and similar ayat in you. So there's a, whatever that is, you call it zodiac, it's in you. That's right. Right? So if we understand that human composition, if we understand that Aries is out there in the constellations, but Aries is also your, your thinking capacity, what's happening up here. But let me just finish the neck comment. So connect, connect, con means with, with neck, whatever that is taking place in the neck, that distribution, there's a flow of blood that's necessary for the continuation of human life. That flow has to come from the heart, the center, the midsection, called the torso, and then it has to be pumped up against gravity. See, this is vicar. Vicar is when you remind yourself of these intricacies that Allah created, because that's where the wisdom is. You mean to tell me blood can go all the way down to my pinky toe and then come back up to the heart <laughs> against gravity? You mean to tell me when I walk and run, I'm running on, on shrivels, on, on round balls, not squares in my ankle? How, how does Michael Jordan do what he does? And his, 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 his feet are attached by balls, <laughs> by round bones. This is what you're supposed to be thinking about. That's dhikr. Well, dhikr Allahi Akbar. And the dhikr on Allah is the greater. No, the dhikr of Allah, not on Allah. No, not Allahu Akbar. Allahi Akbar. Then he that Kesra is possessive. So it means that Allah possesses the dhikr, not that Allah is an Akbar. The dhikr and Allah possessing that dhikr is the dhikr that is Akbar, that is the greatest energy source. That thinking back, that reflecting. See? So you remember we talked about <clears throat> kun fayakun, kin, kun, k and g interchangeable. So k and g, kun, and then gen or generate or generation or generative things that reproduce themselves. See? That's what you're doing every time you do dhikr. You're, reprodu you're reproducing that memory that Allah wants you to think about again. And remember when you're reprodu you are remembering, you're putting the members back together that got lost. The ancient Egyptians know it. They gave it in the Osiris story, cut them up into 14 different pieces. And then his son with his wife, Isis, had to remember his body. They had to bring the members back together until they had that one piece that had gotten away from them, very elusive, called a phallus. They couldn't find it. He said, they sent men out, dispatched into the city, find Osiris's phallus. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, you know, I guess somebody came back like, Ooh, we found it, you know. And then Isis, according to the story that you read, she sat upon it, right? And became pregnant with, Har with Horus, the one called Heru. Isis, her name was Auset in Egypt. And uh, Osiris, his name was Ausar, Wal Asr, you get it? By the setting of the sun. So these things in the Quran, these narratives are addressing knowledge that can possibly be thousands of years old, but Allah puts it, He just capitalizes it. Mm. And the best way to discover it is through. Consonantal connections and the pneumatics method. And the Jews know it because they have meaning for every one of their Hebrew letters that are very similar to the Arabic letters. But they're so caught up in mysticism and wanting to keep all of the knowledge to themselves that they don't tell, they don't even tell all of each other that. <laughs> I was in it for uh, until I was 13. They didn't tell me that. I had to discover this method on my own based on my interest in Imam W.D. Muhammad's method of teaching. He's the first one I heard say that letters mean something. I heard that when I was 17, when, in 1975, when he first gave us that. I said, letters? Really? And he didn't go deep into it. He just gave you hints and clues, as he called them. He put so, that seat there. Yeah. So from that point, I said, well, if the he was talking on the, letter, the capital letter G as representing the profile of the human head. You know, in the mouth, yeah. the lip, 
And I said to myself, well, if I follow that logic to its logical conclusion, then why wouldn't all of the other letters have meanings? And there was an Arab, uh, what's his name, uh, Montauk, I forget his name. He's a very profound Arabic instructor. I think his last name is Montauk. I'm not, uh, I'm not remembering correctly, but uh, he's a very earnest scholar. And I, I see him attempting to give more than what they have sanctioned for him to give. So he has a part of his book on the Arabic language where he's telling you that he discovered, and he says it with great excitement, you know, that he discovered that every Arabic letter has a meaning, but he only has the, the meaning for about seven of them, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I heard this other Arabic uh, brother in, uh, he was uh, in Saudi, he was on YouTube channel, you know, with the subtitles, because he, he only spoke Arabic. And he said the same thing. Oh, yes. Now, he's speaking in Arabic, but, they're, you know, they're translating it into the subtitles. And he said that he met this brother from Africa, a Muslim brother from Africa, who started teaching him the meanings for letters. And he only had three, Adam. But he was so excited, like a child in a candy store, teaching his three letters. So when an African-American Negro colored guy like me comes along and tells you that I have meanings for every single one of those letters, there's only one reason why you wouldn't at least listen to me and hear me out. Because you're being affected by the Iblesian psychology. I'm better than him. Yeah, there's no way in the world he knows more than I do. No way in the world he could know what the letters mean. My sheikh and the, all of they don't know. They tell you it doesn't matter. Don't don't try to get into the you know that's yeah, yeah. how that yeah. You know, they they ain't getting all of that, man. You know you don't know what do you need to know that for? What does the doctor need to know all the different systems in your body for? Why does I'm saying yeah? Who taught you this? Yeah, who where'd you learn this? From? Yeah. Where'd you learn this from? <laughs> oh my God, my blood would boil when I was told that. Oh, it was, man. oh gosh, yeah. You know, that, I, I, you know, when I was a little bit younger, I used to be a little more. I used to be a little more swift and uh, clever with my answers. <laughs> so I'm thinking back now. If they had asked me that question, well, who taught you that? I would have said your mama. <laughs> and wouldn't be lying because I'm talking about Mother Nature. <laughs> 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 I love it. The same mother you got access to, you know. That's I was sucking off the same titty you were sucking off. <laughs> those trees and those animals, and the air and the fire, and the, you know, all that. Nature, Mother Nature, the Al Fitzwalk. That's who taught me that. Allah, He directed those angels to and give us instructions. And I'm not the only one who got. Everybody got it, but people get it. They knew it in the time of Muhammad because there's a very popular hadith <clears throat> where he mentions, he said, uh, just to reduce it, he said, every letter has its own meaning. And he said, I don't mean Alif Lam Mim, like we have it in, say, the beginning of Al-Baqarah. He said, no, Alif has its own meaning. Lam has its own meaning. Mim has its own. That's a popular Bukhari hadith, Bukhari mm. Muslim hadith. But have you ever heard it across the roster? Have you ever heard it in these popular uh, lectures that are given all nope. year long? Right? You won't hear it. It doesn't mean anything to them, or it means too much to them. The only one I heard uh, try to elaborate on a couple of letters was Sheikh Yusuf Hamza. I give him credit for that. I got issues with some other things he says, but so do I. At, at least. He made that manifest that these letters do have meanings. So I'm going to make sure he gets a copy of Nunetics. It'll help him. The other brother with the big long beard, the handsome brother, was the big black beard. I forget his name. That shake, you know. Make sure he's, you know, he's always wearing that. But uh, these are people. Who, Mufti Mank. Mufti Mank. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make sure <laughs> Mr. Mank gets a copy of Nunetics. See, that's my 2024 pledge to make sure that all of these shakes and shakers, and I don't mean that disparagingly, you know, some things need to be shaken up, you know? Just don't be a milkshake. Don't just keep giving us baby formula. Hmm. You know, give us something we can work with. Um, yeah, so just to wrap up what I was saying and we can get into some other things before we conclude. 
that purpose that we spoke about for the Quran and for all scriptures actually is guidance for people who qualify themselves. You have access to it, but you don't have an understanding of it until you're taught properly. And you might say, well, how do we know who to trust to teach us? I just told you who to trust. Trust your mama. Don't trust Instructor Bilal. Just look at where Instructor Bilal is pointing you to. I'm pointing you to the fitwa. If I tell you the letter Aleph is the spine in your back, you got it from there. You don't need me anymore. Everything your spine does in your back, for your back, for your body, that letter Aleph is doing in the word for the word. If Aleph in your back is keeping the body upright, when you see Aleph beginning in an Arabic word like Iman, Amana, faith, trust, it's serving the same exact purpose. What happens if you remove the spine out of the back? Body collapses. What happens if you remove faith and trust out of your Muslim life or out of your human life? Your life collapses. You can get injured in the spine and live, but be incapacitated and be in a wheelchair or on crutches for the rest of your life. And that's just one letter. Aleph. It has a whole lot of other meanings. It means leadership. It means a lot of things. That's why it's in these prophets' names also. Ibrahim. Adam. <laughs> that Aleph is powerful. So this is the journey that we need to commit to. There's a group of people in the Quran and Surah 2 called the Ulul al -Bab. I don't know if you're familiar with that term or that phrase. It's the section of the Quran where Allah is differentiating between the Muhtamat and the Mutashabihat Ayat, what they call the fundamental and the allegorical verses, even though those are the wrong translations for those words, but we'll work with it for now, right? And Allah says that none will grasp its message, meaning the message that brings together the muhkamat with the mutashabihat, meaning the plain discernible messages with the more discreet, uh, harder to understand messages, even though, again, that's not the right meanings for those words. Dr. Haney would tell you that because he's got a nice spin on that also. So Allah says, and none will, get, will grasp the messages except Ulul al bab which they translate incorrectly as men of understanding. Has nothing to do with males, first of all. But Ulul, Ulul al bab Ulul al bab means it's, a, it's relating to what's called the Lub, L-U-B-B. -B. And the Lub is what I was speaking to <coughs> when I told you that the blood is given preferential treatment to the brain and then it loops around the body. Loop. Yeah. Yep. See, B and P, interchangeable, right? So that's what I'm talking about. It's the heart, but it's not a heart that only recognizes sensitivities and emotionalism because it begins there. That's where every baby begins, right there on that breast right there in the emotional center of its mother, emotional concerns, its cries, she has to come to his rescue, change its diapers. On. But then she begins to teach the child and knowledge then becomes transferred from the heart region, so to speak, the emotions in the person. The baby has to learn how to control his emotions. But you don't have to cry over everything, Johnny. Stop crying over spilled milk. <laughs> you know? And then she teaches Johnny the better way to be more reasonable. So, okay, well, your sister's playing with the toy now. And when she's finished, then you get a chance to play. And he'd sit there and wait. And then, you know, they're hugging each other again and playing. And all. So information is transferred from the heart center, from the emotions, from the sensitivities and the sentiments of the person up to the intellect of the person so that the person can cogitate on things now. The person can reason with knowledge and information. They can put things in their proper place, in the proper context, well, you know, yeah, I know what he said, but he really didn't mean it like that. I know my cousin. He, he wouldn't really just be disrespectful like that. Give him a minute. He's going through something, see? But if you're on the emotional level, you're ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Yo, Puke! You're outside his window. <laughs> Puke! Come on here! 
You know what I mean? And bring Ray Ray with you. I did with both of y'all. Bring your brother Ray Ray. I don't care. You know, Pookie and Ray Ray be ready to meet you. Because of something they think you said to his girlfriend or his wife or his, you know, whatever. So, no. Knowledge is to be transferred from the heart to the intellect. And that's the lub. Knowledge that is registering on the sensitivities, but also on the sensibilities. You see that? From the sensitivity, the word sensitivity is just the word sense activity. It's the activity of the senses. When your senses become active and become activated by, by looking at the ayat that Allah created up there and there, the birds, he went in the nest and the ants and the beavers and all of that and looking at all, and your senses are becoming fed. Inundated, and every time you see something new, oh, I never saw that breed of butterfly before. Your senses are becoming activated, so that's sense activity, sensitivity. You're becoming sensitive to information, to item, to knowledge, and then that sensitivity grows to become sensibility, the ability in the senses. See, the senses have ability; they don't just have activity. They have ability. You got construction workers who build buildings, and you got other people who build other things, but they don't build constructions. So they have sense activity. They can see what you're doing. They can register how heavy the bricks are that you're trying to move or that you're moving and what your strategy is for moving, you know, large amounts of heavy stuff and equipment and you know, forklifts and a, I don't do it, but I really appreciate I can I can register in my brain what that must be for you. I'd have to be trained in that. You'd have to initiate me into that. Hmm. Right. And when I'm become when I become initiated, that's when my ability becomes activated. So then it becomes a sensibility. So sensibility is related to the ability in the senses to do what Allah clocked into the senses to do. Now, this world is very astute at killing off that ability. They want you to be robots. Do it because I said do it. Don't worry about how it works. I'm telling you how to do it. Don't worry about how it works. I didn't ask you to build it. I asked you to work. I don't ask you to build a computer. Don't worry about how the computer works. Just go to this website, type in this, hit that button, and bring me what I'm asking you for. This world of manipulators, they don't care nothing about you having that information. So they're killing off the ability. See, Abel. Remember Cain and Abel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which one was hit in the head and died? <laughs> Abel. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And believe me, everything I'm telling you is given its correlation and its further explanation in the Quran. Even though we don't recognize that name in the Quran, we just, there's no Abel in the Quran, there's no Hibble, that's how they call him in Africa, Hibble. No, but there are other consonantally connected words to Hibble. Allah says, hold on to the rope of Allah. In English, we call that rope a cable. The K sound, ka, cable, interchanges with another throat sound, the H sound. So that's how ka becomes ha. And also a. Ah, when a is at the beginning of a word, it's a guttural like the rest of those. So cable, hibble, and able are the same character. So when Allah says, and hold on to the cable of Allah, see how important that is? Don't let him die. Hold on to that which is sponsoring in you the ability to do things. That's your sponsor. Don't, don't kill your sponsor. Because huh? this is your cable too. That's a cable. That one we were talking about earlier. You get cut there. You're done. You finish. Unless you got a medic right there who knows exactly <laughs> what to do and it's and it's swift. Even then man, yeah, you, you just chances bleed. are not yeah. You, you bleed out. You bleed out. So um, these people that we were talking about, Ulul al Bab, very important people in the Quran. Mm -hmm.
this is that noise is in your background, right? I'm just one sure. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. If, you, if it has to be, don't worry about it. Um, so the audience that Allah is speaking to when He mentions Ulul al Bab, He's talking to those people who are connected to ancient wisdom. Ul is from Aul, and Aul means ancient. Got it? So, El Bab is from Luke, and it represents that transfer of blood from the heart to the brain that we talked about, the loop. So, there's an ancient process for translating knowledge from the sentiments to the intelligence for, or, or the intellect. There's an ancient practice for that. In India, ancient India, they called it Kundalini. Yeah, Kundalini energy from the mid section or from the sexual organ region all of the way up to the pineal and having that energy fully activated it's the same <laughs> uh let's put it this way hmm. i'm slowing it down a little because i don't want you or anybody else to, to get be, to be befuddled The word Hebrew is speaking to that. Any word in scripture that has BR in it is talking about a transfer of energy from one side, leaving that side empty and filling up the other side with that energy. It's in the word Hebrew. The Hebrews are those who they say crossed over the River Jordan. You get it? They crossed over the... See, it has to do with crossing over. If I say, bring me a glass of water, B-R, right? And bring. That means you have to go from the kitchen sink and bring that water in a glass or in a cup over to where I am. If I say, I need to borrow $10, you got to come over to my house or I have to come over to your house if you don't have no Uber money, <laughs> you know, whatever, token. Or, and I have to bring you $10. So it's leaving my pocket empty of $10 and it's filling your pocket. If I say, meet me across the bridge, I'm on this side of the bridge. You're on that side of the bridge. I need you to come to my side of the bridge. So you have to leave where you are on the side that you're on the New York side, and you have to meet me across the George Washington Bridge on the New Jersey side. BR always means to transfer over, to bring over, to borrow. Right? So it's in the name Ibrahim also. That they call Abraham or Abraham. Abraham, Abraham. But Allah says Ibrahim. Allah says two things. He says Ibrahim and he says Ibrahim. And most people miss that. Instructor Bilal caught that. There's a difference between when Allah pronounces his name, Ibrahim, that's how he begins. But later on, after that great weight of responsibility is conferred upon him to be the imam of all the nations, then after that, you see his name in the Quran as Ibrahim, elongated Kesra. We won't discuss what that means now. Just understand that every single difference in the Quran means something. The fact that Ibrahim's daddy's name is mentioned in the Quran, Azar. But none of the companions of Muhammad are mentioned by name in the Quran. Not even the one who they say went into the into the cave, into the protective, into the protection of the cave. They say Abu Bakr. Quran doesn't give him a name. Quran doesn't give any of the wives. It talks about Muhammad's wives. It, talk, it makes a mention to an incident that happened with Aisha. It never says Aisha. It could have. Wasn't she important enough to be mentioned in the Quran? But old slave Zaid was mentioned. <laughs> Zaid, he's mentioned in the Quran. An ex-slave. Black slave, too. You understand? So why? Because the importance is not in these characters. The importance is in the characteristics of the people, person, 
place, group, town, all of these things that Allah is mentioning, he's not mentioning them, mentioning them as people, places, towns, and that kind of thing. He's mentioning them as archetypes of behaviors, patterns that are in you and me. So there's a Mecca and a Becca in you and me. There's a Kaaba. Forget about the one out there. That's a lie. That one that's being besieged now by all kinds of insects and <laughs> crazy stuff. Hail, hail ball, balls of hail, hail, snow, and so people can't even make their, their circumambulation because they're being blown across ice, sheets of ice, where they used to be concrete that they replaced with marble and all these other things. So Allah is teaching them, you know, giving them a little lesson. They replaced the original Kaaba. The original Kaaba was shaped like a, it was horizontal. It was like shaped like a coffin, actually. Have you ever heard that? <clears throat> that entire reshaping completely all changes right. the all resonance. Right. All right. I see you're, you're able to meet me at the watering hole, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the entire, all of it. Hold it for frequency. Oh, man. The things I'm going to say about this in the next semester or when we get off of this uh public uh youtube stuff yeah i have to bring what it is that i'm supposed to bring and i'm telling you out there in youtube land you better find a way to remain a part of the course called the, the university online learning course i haven't even really begun teaching yet but i can't continue to tap dance because youtube doesn't want you to talk about certain things I'm not a trained tap dancer working for YouTube dollars. I've never gotten a dollar from YouTube. And I'm, I could be monetized at the numbers that I have. But see, my sustenance is coming from other sources, heavenly sources. So I'm not going to say much more other than that. I think I've given you enough on that. Um, so what we can do is, uh, if you have any other questions about what we've spoken of thus far, then I'll be more than happy to uh, to answer them. You did speak about Reba. I will give you something on that. Remember, follow the bouncing ball of continental connections. All you have to do is go to other words in the Quran or in the culture that have R and B in them, those consonants. Don't worry about the vowels. So people might say, oh, well, rub, the word of rub, you know, R-B-B, -B, rub. Mm. Okay. And it doesn't <clears throat> matter. It doesn't matter if it has a double letter as long as it's that letter. So R-B, R-B-B, they're still going to have similar meanings. Now, they tell you in the dictionary that the rub also means the evolver. That's a key word. They say creator, but we know there's another word, el khalaq, the creator. Well, what's the difference? The real key is in the word evolver. So Allah is the one who is evolving. What does that mean? He takes something from nothing. He takes something, he brings it into existence as the creator or as el, what's called al-bari. You see that? The BR, al-bari. Mm. He's, 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 he's transferring. What the scholars don't even stop to ask the question, where is he transferring that from? <laughs> Your wife gets pregnant and nobody stops to ask, where did this baby come from oh the sperm in the ovum whoa 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 you know what what is that substance sustenance a substance in the sperm that's able to create human life when it matches up or or syncs up with ovum material and then where did it come from just like you asked the question where did this universe come from this was here when you got here but where in the world did it come from pun intended and Allah, has, he addresses all of these things in the Quran. al alamin he's a Rabbi al alamin He's the Rabb, the developer, the evolver. I also add the involver. <clears throat> I, I call Allah the involver, evolver. But because we're not taught what involution is, 
we concentrate only on evolution. Allah said he created everything Zaljain in pairs and in noble pairs. So they can't be just evolution. There has to also be, be involution. Something had to happen. Just like you can't come here as an individual unless you were first inside of your mother. Then you were put outside of your mother to evolve. But there was an involutionary process taking place in your mother's belly that came to be you and me. And it's the process of becoming materialized, going a little bit deeper now, that we're talking about as involution. And involution behaves in the opposite fashion that evolution behaves. Evolution takes you from this to this. <clears throat> involution takes you from this conceptually and then whittles you down to this so that you can begin your evolutionary life. Deep subject. I'm not going to get any deeper into it. <laughs> yeah, but it's the process. You can see the process just even in your in your in your eyeball, you know, in the in the the opening and shutting of the iris, you know, the, the waxing and the waning, if you will, mm. of what's taking place right there in the center, that black dot, that black, that original black stone that Allah put in your eye, the eye of every mm. human, no matter whether it's surrounded by blue, brown, green, whatever, doesn't matter, hazel, doesn't matter. Everybody's central focus is black. And that black means something. You know it because science is always talking about black holes. Dark matter. So they have meanings for things that they haven't transferred over to masses of people because they know masses of people are not oriented for that level of initiation. So some of us have to volunteer for that duty. I volunteered. People in my class, they volunteered. They want to go deeper. They want to know more, but they want to know how to apply it to practical living. That's all. That's the only thing that's missing. How do we take all of what the instructor is saying and what this Sheikh and that Imam is saying and reduce it down to something practical? So when I go home, I can explain it to my wife and she, she'll she know why I spend as many hours in front of that material as I do. Right now, it's just all like, it's just knowledge, but how do we apply it? That's what next semester is for. Beginning in January, we're going to show you the practical application of Quranic insight, more than just rituals. More than just learning how to speak a foreign tongue. More than simple morality. We want to learn ethics. Ethical behavior. How we behave with people who we don't know the names of. People who we don't eat the same food they eat. We don't wear the same clothes and the same colors and live in the same towns. We don't have the same background that they have. How do we live with them in a way that's most pleasing to Allah? Easy for me to live with Cousin Pookie. I know him. I know what he's going to do. You know. I'm saying I know he likes his cheeseburgers and his fries. You know? <laughs> but, but if I have to deal with the Mexican brothers, I'm trying to cut a deal with them or, or, or go into business with them, I might have to sit in a Mexican restaurant and, and eat some tacos or something, you know? Mm. And even recommend it. Hey, man, you guys got a nice taco joint around here? So, oh, yeah, taco, you like taco? Yeah. yeah. That's called ethics. And ethic is from the word ether. And the ether is the fifth element, so-called. It's actually the first element out of which the other four elements are derived. That's what I mean by involution. Everything is in involution within the ether, and then it becomes materially manifested into this evolutionary plane or state that we live in. And then it's our job based on the ilm, the accumulation of knowledge, curiosity. It's our job to complete the development, it's not Allah's job. He brought you here. That's enough for Allah. He gave you all of the capacity. He didn't give the dog and the elephant and the lion and the, the tsetse fly. He didn't give them what he gave us as humans. So you got to cut the, the manipulators off at the past. They keep telling you, don't worry, don't study. We study for you. Don't worry about it. It's not, it's not your job. You got already got two jobs and a half. Why you want to study? We let us do that. And then the ones who are saying, let us do that, are not sincere and worthy. 
So they they keep the wealth and they give you the scraps, the scraps. So that's what we're contesting. Why are you keeping all of the wealth? They say Jack Spratt could eat no fat. That's a nursery rhyme. And his wife could eat no lean. But between the two, they licked the plate clean. Jack, a derivative of Jacob. It's the diminutive form of Jacob. Jack. All these nursery rhymes with Jack. Jack Spratt, Jack and Jill, Jack and the Beanstalk. Where all these Jacks come from? They didn't, they didn't have access to other names in nursery rhyme, Ville. No, Jack means anything that in its initial stages is it becomes involved in up and down activity. It's talking about the Kundalini energies. Jacob, Jacob's ladder, see? It says Jacob used to go up to the heavens back and forth and he would steal the heavenly fire is talking about very cunning people on this planet who know how to steal from the pineal glands energies and use those energies against you you see so so jack, pine cone. jack and the beanstalk he's going up and down the beanstalk what is he trying to get the golden egg <laughs> from the goose from the goose whatever whatever is protecting it yeah yes indeed you got it right <clears throat> uh even in the world we play a game called jacks where we take the red ball mm -hmm. we throw it up and we scoop up as many jacks as we can get and whoever scoops mm -hmm. up the most jacks before the ball falls Wins. the winner so it's all speaking to the same thing the jack that you use to change your tire on your car up and down. Ah. Up and down, right? Yeah, up and down. Jack always means up and down. It's a reference to some other things that I'll speak on on this Sunday when I continue my subject on the Jackalbite or the Jackalbite conspiracy. But that's 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 what we're talking about. We're talking about the transferring of energies. We're talking about understanding the human being as an internally motivated composite of many, many different things. We really don't even know how our thumb does this. And we do it all day long texting. But we if someone were to ask you, how does your thumb do? You couldn't explain the, the chemistry and the biology and the physiology that goes into the, the best of scientists can't explain it. So don't be feel bad if you can't or if I can't. These are mysteries that are clocked into creation for us to appreciate. Because if it weren't for this thumb being able to do this and secure things, oh, there'd be no human world. There would be no human world if you couldn't grasp something and lock it in with this thumb. Like I grasp and, this 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 can of uh, fizzy water, whatever it is, you know? And the Jack Sparrows of the world would cut off your thumb as a punishment. Ah, you get it. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. Totally. Decombobulating the light, yeah. making sure that you can't make progress in this world. Tom Thumb, <laughs> another nursery rhyme. Tom Thumb. <laughs> the uh, ties in. the egg that sat <clears throat> on the wall, Humpty Dumpty. Hump goes up, dump goes down. Speaking to the same thing. The manipulation of the energies and as soon as they see you coming up they set forth a plan to bring you back down this is why in the quran last point on this Fir'aun, pharaoh who everybody thought was the baddest man in the land Right now, you ask the people, you ask Muslim, ask scholars, say, who's the baddest man in, in the Quran next to Satan? Pharaoh. They say Pharaoh. <laughs> Fair, Pharaoh for sure. And you say, well, why, why would you say Pharaoh? That's an illusion that he's the baddest man in the land. Musa set him straight. Ibrahim set the Pharaoh in his day straight. But Musa for sure. 
He confronted that Pharaoh, even though he was knocking in his knees over nervousness because this man raised him. And Pharaoh said, you know, I can get you for doing that thing that you did. He never even mentioned what it was. I'm going to get, get you for doing that thing that you did. You remember that thing you did, right? And he said, no, you got to you gotta let my folks out of here. You got to let them go. And, you know, Pharaoh's like, you, who's going to stop me? You and what army, you know? <laughs> and uh, Pharaoh said, Haman, that was his assistant. So it's very close to human, right? Like a corruption of human, Haman. He said, build me a build me a scaffold. Build me a ladder, is what he was asking. So I can go up to the heavens and take a peek at this, this Ilah that Musa keeps talking about. Because as far as I'm concerned, the only Ilah here is moi. Me. I'm the only God here. But build me a ladder so I can go up there and, and take a peek at the one that Moses is talking about. So what is he saying? I believe that it is speaking also to the science of DNA manipulation. That ladder. Go ahead. So every archetype or, or archetype of the Pharaoh, it would seem that throughout history, their initiation uh, and conclusion would be to um, build an instrument that would take you to the heaven and so that they could replace that deity, that Allah, for them. Yes. And so that would be that would be one aspect. The other thing that came to thought that maybe going off rails, you, you guide me on this conversation here, uh, is that that manipulation, the Humpty Dump, Mm -hmm. that may be also <clears throat> could be wrong, could be completely wrong but that's why we're having this conversation that may be the dopamine levels that we may think that that is our sustenance that, I don't know I'm trying to formulate my thoughts here but here's where you go with that, I'm going to show you exactly where to go you ready? Yep. go to the five brain states the five brain wave states Okay. al Islam Allah Hams. Al Islam is built upon five. It never said five what? <laughs> they say pillars. No such word as pillars in relation to five of anything in the Quran. No. It's speaking to a different level of reality. And that is that. The brain operates electromagnetically in waveforms. They can be in your emotions, they can be in your intellect, they can be in your instincts. But they operate based on these waves. A lot of times when the Quran is speaking about people being overtaken by the ocean or by the waves, we think it's talking about some event in history where people were submerged beneath the, the, the rivers and the oceans. No. Uh-uh. When Allah speaks about the juncture between the two rivers, we think it's talking about somewhere out in Mesopotamia somewhere or in Jerusalem somewhere. Those are just physical models or prototypes, markers for something that is taking place throughout history for every group of humanity inside of you. So if you know that water represents your emotions, take it from there. Water has depths, different levels of depths. And then again, you get to a point where it's just totally dark and you can't see nothing. They have fish all the way down in the deepest oceans that have flashlights built into their heads. <laughs> it is, I forget the name of this fish, but he's got a flashlight literally protruding from his head. And the deep sea divers went down there and they retrieved some of those fish. And now I know why Allah put them all the way in the deep of, deepest of darkness, because they are the ugliest fish you'll ever want to see. <laughs> Ugly! <laughs> I'll, I'll stick them down there where nobody's really got to see them. You know? <laughs> and give them some mercy. I'll put a little light on the end of their head so they can find their food. And you know, So, no, man, these are instructing signs. Ayat. The ayat of Allah, all around us and in us. 
And when you start to look within you, you're going to find out that you are a lot more valuable a creation than people have taught, especially that you've learned in your house where you were just a knucklehead child, you know, middle child, a troublemaker or whatever, you know. That ain't according to Allah. According to Allah, you were created fi asani taqween in the most excellent of organizational designs. I want to find that organization in me. I'm tired of what the world told me. I'm tired of what my mama told me, my daddy and Uncle Pookie. And I'm tired of what they told me I am. I'm my grade school teacher, B minus. That ain't me. In my relationships, you ain't nothing but a low down dog. Well, if I am, I got to change that because Allah created me fi asani taqween. I could be all those bad things, but it's on me now to change it now that I know what my true creation is. Nobody wants me as a best friend anymore. Nobody wants me as a husband anymore. Nobody wants me as a son, a child of theirs. Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving come around. They pretend like they ain't home because they know you coming. <laughs> no, I got to change that. You owe somebody something or you you uh, promise somebody something, whatever. Well, go deal with that. You know, that, that almost caused me a conniption, man. I had left a relationship undone. One that was a strong, I mean, this person helped me through thick and mo thick. Wasn't even no thin in the things that he helped me with. And then I started moving on and I just forgot. Well, yeah, you know, I ain't seen him in 10 years. Yeah, but in those 10 years, I owed him something. And when that dawned on me and I became a better person, I said, I'm going to find, I went on, you know, whatever that service is where you find people who are missing, you don't have their numbers anymore. I went on that, I found them. Gave him back his present, what, what I promised him. And now I'm a free man, I'm a free soul. That's Allah doing that. That's the plight of human beings. That's what we go through. It's just the vicissitudes of life that bring circumstances in and out of the life that are not problems, but they are challenges. If you overcome the challenge, it pops you up to the next level. And you don't have to keep doing this, climbing the ladder and coming, falling back down, climbing the ladder, falling back. You don't have to do that anymore. I don't do that anymore personally. I'm not that old guy who would just get angry and just shoot off at the mouth and just cuss people out if I needed to, if I thought I needed to. I'm not that guy anymore. I've graduated. Took me three marriages to get it right <laughs> in that department. And how many jobs in the other department before you said, I, I have to just start working for myself. I'm not built to work for other people. I'm not. Can you imagine me working at McDonald's? <laughs> at the checkout counter at Walmart, you understand. And all this stuff is floating through my head. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. I have to be what Allah is pushing me to be, encouraging me to be, creating me to be. I'm here to help many more people other than me and my little family. And I have a big family that I'm calling a little family. But I'm here to help the world. I hope I'm doing a fair job. So that's all I'm going to say today. We'll have a part two on this. Beautifully put. Anything else you need me to address? In terms of the academia, no. I did not expect this. I was not expecting this conversation. Me either. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have any. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you uh, if you have anything after this. Uh, I'm I'm free, uh, so we can. Uh, if you'd like to entertain the uh, technical aspects of whatever it is you're hoping to accomplish, yeah, uh, it's up to you. Yeah. So let's close out of this, and then we'll spend just a few minutes because I know my wife is. I can feel her. Okay. Wanting me to eat dinner with her. Yeah. So we'll address yeah. that also. Yeah. All right. Or maybe we'll do the technical aspect on a different day. That's entirely yeah. up to you. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, uh, we're on Let's close Thursday. that out. Where are we now? We're on Friday now. Yeah, hey, uh, wow. Saturday, Saturday, December. Saturday, 7th. really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how you know I'm a free man when you forget which day it is. That's and right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> I, I, I've done days of the year now. That's, yeah. that's that's how I operate. Okay, so let's look at uh, let's start with Monday. Uh, okay, around the same time. And see I can do, do I can do uh, after seven o'clock on Monday. That's fine. That's better for me. Okay, it's good. So let's we can even say eight o'clock just to make sure that it's after seven. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, instructor. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure, and to uh, to have this connection is revitalizing, uh, as well as uh, inspirational. And <clears throat> right now, a as you speak, and I'm practicing as much as I can active listening, I'm recognizing that every single book here on my right hand side in this console are pieces of the puzzle that you're allowing to formulate. It's all coming just like this. Now I have a beautiful picture. Different parts, different puzzles, different experiences. Uh, I'm very grateful for it, so thank you. Thank many, you many, well. many thanks to you. Thank you. And obviously, of course, it's, it's, of course, it's, it's, <clears throat> of course. No I'm reward not. do I ask of thee. <laughs> just stay grateful that's that's all i ask stay grateful all right all right all right you're adam you're supposed to start this thing all over again <laughs> all right folks all right <laughs> it's a pleasure <laughs> all right so that what you call this one <clears throat> okay talk to you soon